everyone. Welcome. Welcome to the Stock Swoosh Show Market Review. I thought I would review the SPY here. It's Monday, September 8th, and the market's holding bullishly uh, very nicely to start out the week here. Friday, we had a day where the market came down fake lower, which is what I said I thought the market would do Friday, meaning that we would fake lower but not really come in hardly at all and close neutral, I thought, really, meaning fake lower, fake higher. Instead, the market actually fake lower in the morning and closed very bullish into the close of Friday. Unexpected, but again, I don't really, I'm never really surprised about anything that happens bullish in this market anymore. But this was pretty aggressive for this to come down and hold as nicely, cleanly as it did. You could have bought the market, and I'll go over that on Friday, and held it at the close. Uh, and again, we could have come down deeper, but we did not do it, and I don't think we're going to do it. Low of this bar here is 199.39. Low of this bar here is 199.41. Boom. And remember, support and resistance are areas. Rallied up, resistance. Rallied up, resistance. Came down, rallied up. Gapped up to support, came in, support, rallied up, support. So this is support. The market held support on Friday. Oh, geez, Louise, look at how strong it is. <clears throat> so on Friday, you would have had to buy this extremely late. You would have had to know where to put the stop to buy this even because this happened late. Again, here was the fake hire, came in, but I knew we weren't really going to go much of anywhere lower. We bounced very quickly onto that number and rallied the entire day then. You actually could have bought the market uh, into 10.30, 11 o'clock reversal time and held it all day on Friday. Today, the SPY showed some immediate weakness, but it didn't really go anywhere with that. And we closed with a doji looking bar with a bottoming tail. Actually, the low of today was 200. I'm seeing that. Wow, I'm just seeing that now. Hold on, let me look at something here. Today really is the low of today was 200. Look at that. People are still going to try to keep shorting this market, but I'm telling you, this thing is strong as all get out. This is a buy point here, actually. And now that I saw we bounce off that 200 number, this is like solidifying itself like a brick to do what? To go higher. It's setting up like a breakout play. Gorgeous, beautiful, fabulous, bullish market. I mean, you got to love it. How, how can you not love this stuff? <laughs> you have to love it. Specifically, if you do gaps. All right, let's look at what I was talking about today in the webinar earlier today and why. This is just the icing on the cake here for why the only methodology to trade for day trading, swing trading, core trading is really gaps because it's the only way you can tell anything that's happening here. This is the reason I predicted everything the market's done so well is because I know how to read gaps. So let's go back way back to the beginning of 2013. Here's where I want to be. The market started out 2013 bullish, bullish on the second of January 2013, first trading day of the year, market gapped up. That was an instigator for something that would lead to a rally that has lasted all of 2013 and will last all of 2014. If you bought this bullish gap that happened in January 2nd of 2013, you could have bought this gap here in the SPY and the low of it was 144.73. We've seen nothing of this number. We rallied over 200. That's a 65 point move almost that's happened basically in the course of, of a year and a half. What will come into probably the end of being two years because we're not going to get anywhere near this. And it had a beautiful rally. Okay, So this is an entry point to go long and I'm sure a lot of people at this point thought the market wasn't going to do this because I remember, and you can go back and trail back my market videos back, gosh because I started the live room in December, but I was doing market videos way back that long where this we kind of slish sloshed around in here. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth and people thought the market was going to break. This is the end of 2012. But we were strong even then, and this is proof of the positive in the pudding, and you could have carried this on through. And how do I know? Because I know how to read this gap. I know how to read this gap. This is a bullish gap, and I can, this is a good one. Again, I have a rating system, a 26-point rating system, which tells me what gaps are significant. I mean, I could point out actually a 1,000 gaps in this chart, but not all of them are meaningful. You've got to look for the ones that are meaningful. How do I know? I have a rating system to tell, to tell me this is a good one. And it was, and it rallied. Nice, beautiful one here. Rallied, came in, retested, 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 bounced. This is a April now. We're into April 2013, and there we go. Okay. Had a bullish gap here, but do you see this didn't hold? Okay. Had a bullish gap here, but do you see this didn't hold? Had a bullish gap here, do you see this didn't hold? You know, you really, really have to know which ones are the ones 
And then I remember this even here where the market fell in on this big topping tail back, this is May of 2013, market gap down here. Again, you got to know how to read the gaps. That even this is a gap down. Is this a real gap down to go lower? Is this breaking the market? The answer was no. Came in, retest the support rally. Another bullish gap that happened here. But again, is that one that you should do an entry for long? No, that was broken too. Now let's get back into the end of 2013. A bullish gap here. This was again a nice one. October, October of 2013, market rally. I remember this day here. Amazing show of strength from the market reversal here. Rallied up, continued down. And when we retested this area here in January, we held, what did we hold? Perfect and lovely bullish gap. Now we're coming into 2014. And this is, this is here. Let's pretend this didn't happen here. Here's where everyone was saying the market was extended and toppy. And people were shorting this. You can see the red bar that came in here, some selling. Topping tail, some selling. Red bar here, some selling. I, th I think the one amazing thing, and, I, you know, I'm so happy. I love to short. I mean, I do have a, sh I, I love to short. I'm the queen of shorting. But the thing is, because I'm so good at shorting, I can, I know what weakness looks like. Like, I know what weakness is. If I would see it in the market, I would say it in the moment that I see it, and I would call it. But this, that, this action here, this price action, as I'm reading it live in the day, and I'm seeing it here even in the chart flat, is this, I mean, obviously I trade all these days, but this isn't weakness, okay? There are some selling, some profit taken from people that are along the market, that sell into it, that have created this, but this isn't really, really what I would call weakness. That is something that's going to break a chart. I call it a break, or uh, when something does a corrective gap, okay? Those are the only times, really, that you could look to enter something unless it was a continuation gap. I teach all of this in the class. But these red bars in here, people were selling some profits of the longs, and also there were some shorts that come into here, traders that short that are not making the trend in the overall market and were wrong, okay? I mean, the difference you can tell whether or not the stuff that I teach in the class is right or not, it's just, I mean, you could even just look at my market calls and see how well I've called this market to know that I really know what I'm talking about, about gaps and price action. So anyways, here we have it. So this came in, and all around this here, this was, I remember, uh, I was getting a 1,000 emails a, a day about the market. We're getting for correction. And in May, I said, no, this is not extended. That's not a strategy to play into, which means you would people would short the extension of a reversal of a trend, which the market's long, so people want to short the reversal to come in. But you're, it's not going anywhere. Like, you can't even get any play in it. I mean, I can't even look. I mean, there's just, there. do not short this market. Don't do it. Not for any reason in the world. If I say short this market, then you know it's a real break because I'd love to short. Anyways, people were saying this market was extended. I was getting all the emails. And, da, 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 and I knew we were higher. And then when we gapped up here, I had the confirmation. Confirmation was May 27, 2014. Now we're into 2014. And the market made new highs. This is new highs in SPY. Go, go, go. And here we have it. Now, there was a bearish gap that happened here. I did not short this, although you could have shorted that on the day and actually made money to the downside. It didn't go anywhere. I didn't think it would go anywhere. In fact, I didn't even think it would come into here. Why? Because I knew this gap was a good one, and I thought it would haul, and it did haul. Boom. Again, these are areas for resistance are areas. Broke on through, rallied up. And now I know people are going to try to short this again. People tried to short this the last couple of days here in the last week. People are still fighting against this thing. And why do it? The only way to make money in the market is to go with what's happening with the power of money. And how do you know that? You read gaps. How do you know what's happening? You read the trend. How do you know, how do you know how to read the trend correctly, which many people do not know how to do and I'm very good at, is you read the gaps. Because they tell you everything you need to know about what's really happening when something's falling through or breaking. And the interesting thing is I keep talking about it. I'm just like, I cannot believe that we do not have a huge monster bullish day in this market yet. It's going to happen, people. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Get ready, okay? One of these days, we're going to see a monster rally in the SPY and the QQQs in the market. The Q bar is probably going to be 3 to 5 bucks on the day. And when the SPY bar does it, it could be $10 on the day. It could be 15 it could be a day where we're rallying all the way up to 210, 215. We could just go, whoo! It could be go to 225 because I don't know where we're going to start the rally because here we are close to day around 259. 
<clears throat> but this is setting up like a breakout play here, truly. And uh, every time we do these little doohickeys down in here, we're really pulling ourselves up to meet each other, which you can see here on the 15-minute chart. Like, this is what people were trying to short today. Like, seriously, look at that. Now, forget, forget anything but this. Here is you, and you're looking at 7,000 green bars. This is a 15-minute, by the way. This isn't even one of my chart. This is, you know, seven straight hours of trading. Green bars, you could count the red bars on your hand in here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, two hands. This is a doji. It doesn't count, really. But, you know, you can't short that. So the market came down, held, held 200, and now that I saw that, bottom tail, into the whole number, 200, at 145, into 2 o'clock, major reversal time, you could have bought the market into the close, and I obviously don't like to trade the afternoon, but you could have done this with 100% conviction, and again, this is a buy point, this is a buy point, this is, people are saying this is going to, this is making a top, people are saying this is extended, people are saying we need a reversal, we need a correction, and actually this is an entry point, now listen to what I'm saying, this is very important, that philosophy that's out there that's incorrect if you're reading the power of money the price if you're reading it like I am for reading the gaps is what's going to make this market go to some astronomical number when it does and I'm not just talking about the green bar big day that's going to happen sometime and whenever okay whenever it happens I'm talking about the actual movement that the market's going to make even from here between now and the end of the year but I said the next four to six months it could happen in the fall, could happen in early 2015, this huge monster rally, but the SPY and the QQQs, the market itself, Qs are going to make new highs, all-time highs. SPY already has, but the market is going to go to some number that's astronomical, that no one out there is saying but me. But so, I mean, the number exactly for the SPY is, SPY. literally, it could be between 250 and 300, and I'm not even kidding you that the SPY could go there. With 250 is 100% realistic, 300 would be the dream target. Do I think this market could go to dream target? You betcha. Because people keep making attempts to short this. And it's ridiculous, but that's what people like to do. They like to pay reversals because they think, I missed the long. I missed the long. I can't go long anymore because I've missed it. You haven't missed it. There's nothing. There's, this is fine. Go long here. If you want to go long, if you want to make money, you stay with the trend. The trend here is long. Okay. Unless it does a bearish gap that tells me that the chart is breaking, how will I know that? I will just get up in the morning and look at gaps. And I'll look at the gaps in the market to see if the market is breaking in a gap. I knew this one was not one to do, meaning that it was going to break the chart. So that's the scoop. And, you know, it's just a matter of time here. And what's going to create that huge momentum, which is going to fall through anyways because the power money is going to come in and continue to buy, what's going to create even more momentum is two things. First of all, the power money is going to keep buying the market lifted higher like it held today and Friday. And in the gap that happened back here that held in August. Then after that, people are going to keep trying to short this market. They're going to get stopped out. They're going to have to kill their short with a loss, which creates a buy to cover, which creates green, which you rarely get in stuff unless people are doing the reversals. When you have a power money coming in, it blows those people through. But people keep trying to make an attempt to short it. Keep trying to make an attempt to short it. You can see in here people made an attempt to short this. This is really not any profit margin here, though. And then... The next thing that's going to happen is people are eventually going to give it up of, with the shorting of the market, face the fact that the market is higher and that this is so strong and evident that it cannot be shorted against, which no one should be doing anyways, and I said that like months ago and all year basically, but people are going to realize, oh my gosh, I really have to get in this long here. I'm missing all of this money. This is crazy. I need to buy. And then, then, when that last buying comes in, it'll lift the market to the crazy number that I'm talking about. Okay. This market hasn't done anything even near extension. And again, that is not a strategy. Someone asked me today in the webinar when I was done, who, who was it? I think it was Rich, a gentleman named Rich. I don't know him, but he asked me. And he said, is there something where you look at percentages? Da, da, da. It's the same thing where people look to do things like the market has moved a certain percentage this year from this state to this state, and it's coming in a certain percentage, and the gap comes down a certain percentage, and it gaps down or gaps up a certain percentage. There is no such thing like that. You know, it'd be easy to say if a stock gaps down or if the market makes a move or if the stock makes a move a certain percentage up or down, you can short it or buy it or it's going to reverse or it's going to do this or it's going to do that. The answer is no. 
There is no such thing in the overall trend or even gap analysis. Boom, fact, that's it, okay? I'm telling you right now. That's why people get trapped and they hurt themselves. And also that's how people that are actually in the right move take their profits too early and they shouldn't be getting out. And they get scared and they get out. And actually fear can come in when people are up money. You could be a, you could be up money. Listen to listen, this makes no sense, but this is how people think. You could be up profit. You're not down. You're up. And you take it out because you're afraid that if you don't take it out, you're gonna lose. Or you're afraid if you don't take it out that you're not gonna make as much. All of that is fear and greed, which has no bearing on any successful trader's choices or decision making. Okay, because that's not your brain thinking that. Anyways, what was I saying? Oh, so just getting back to the percentages, it doesn't work like that. If it was that simple, we'd all program a black box in a machine. I, for one, would do it as well. I'd program a black box. I'd go do, 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 and I'd bro program it, and I'd go on vacation for six months. Come back, check my black box, check my profits, roll in the money, roll around in the money in my apartment, and go back out and hiatus and travel the world. You, it's, it's not that easy, okay? It just does not work like that. You have to pay attention, read stuff in live time, read the gaps, read what's happening, see what's going on, read the price, see the price action live in the day. And I trade every day and I'm in the market so I can see that. And that's how I'm making the call so well because I'm reading it and I have a feel for it. Plus my 26 point rating system that I teach in the Golden Gap class. However, that being said, it's just not that easy to look at one thing or percentages, okay? The one thing is the strategy, but it's complex, meaning you have to learn it. You have to learn anything you do in the market that's weighty. Anything that's going to make you money in the market that you want to do. If you want to make money in the market, you have to learn it. It's not like, oh, somebody gave me a tip, a hot stock tip. It doesn't work like that. Even if you took a hot stock tip and it worked, the next time that person would give you one, it would lose. And you'd end up losing overall. You have to learn how to trade if you want to trade the market. If you're serious about doing it, and you want to put your money in the market, you have to learn how to do it. It's a skill that can be taught. I'm teaching people how to trade. So the good news is that you can learn. You have a brain. It's very capable. You can learn the skill, and then you can do it, and then you can know. But it's not as simple as just looking at percentages or everyone would just program their boxes, and then you know what? Then it wouldn't even work. It wouldn't even work. We'd all be programming the same stuff, and it wouldn't even work. Then it wouldn't work, okay? That's why people that sell systems where it makes a trigger and a bell goes off, dude, it's a buy signal, dude, it's a sell signal, do this, do that, short here, buy there. Those things are nowhere near like my program because you cannot train like that. Over the long haul, it does not help you consistently make money. You have to learn how to trade if you want to make money. I think this is why there's such a high percentage of people that actually lose in the market and such a small percentage of people that win because many people don't want to learn. They just want to say, oh, I want the money. Ugh. But you can't trade like that. You actually have to learn how to do it if you want to make money. And I'm not saying you have to trade full time to make money in the market. You could learn how to do something on the side and make money as a swing trader or core trader and basically help yourself to make money for profits, for retirement, for extra cash or whatever you want to do. You don't, you don't have to do this for a living like me. You could do something else and you could be an investor in the market for the short term or long term but you could be very savvy and skilled and learned so that at some point in your future, you could actually do it for a career if you want to. You know, if you ever decide you want to work part time, because it's basically part time hours as a trader, or if you retire and then you have money coming in like that. Because a lot of people's social security and pensions just don't cut the mustard anymore to pay their bills. And you have to be proactive about where you're going and what you want to do with your future. <clears throat> I'm a firm believer in that. So this is Melissa with the stockswish.com. If you would like more information on the upcoming Golden Gap class, it's this weekend, September 13th and 14th. And I'm doing a bonus day Monday with live trading from 8.30 to 12 on the Monday. And the class is Saturday and Sunday. If you're interested and want to sign up, email me at melissa at the stockswish.com. Nice bullish market. The call is continually still higher. We can retest the high tomorrow and fall. We will still hold. The market is still strong. The only thing that's going to take us out of this trend is something that I would see on the live day. And trust me, if I would, I'd do a video so you can keep watching the market videos. But if you really want to make money with me, then the key is to take my class, learn how to trade, learn what I'm seeing, and then trade with me in the live trading room and get my calls. Uh, I did a class last week, and a couple of people said, I said, what did you think? And uh, they said, 
it was really an, a window into my world because of the way that I explain things. It's the way that I see things. It's like if you could stand behind me every day and see through my eyes to see the market, you would see what I see, which I just explained here now, but how do I get it right so consistently to pick the right stocks to trade every day and read the market and things that happen? I mean, you know, it's, it's seeing it the way that I see it. And that's where the learned process goes through where you have to gain the knowledge and the information, which you learn in the class, and then the skill base and experience with trading with me. So have a great night, everyone. Have a fantastic night. It's Melissa with the StockSwish.com. Email me if you need anything. Have a great night, everybody.